Today we're going to talk about letting go of perfectionism. Is that anything anybody here struggles with? Yeah. Yeah? No? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Good. Well, you're in the right place. You know, it's funny. Um, one of the things that I saw on Facebook recently, I, I subscribed to Dr. Henry Cloud has this daily blurb that he sends out. And so he did one on perfectionism the other day that I thought was pretty hilarious. I'll read to you. He, he put, a woman told me she was a perfectionist and proud of it. I asked how it felt to be psychotic. <laughs> Demanding perfection isn't reality. So one of the problems with being a perfectionist is that it's not possible. There's no such animal. So you're kind of putting yourself in a situation of being constantly miserable at failing at what you're expecting of yourself. And that's the pain of perfectionism or relating to life that way, isn't it? You know, the shaming kind of talk because that's what you're thinking, where you should be living, and, and that's what you're expecting of yourself. And we fall short because it's not possible. You know, and I was thinking about this too. It's not possible to be perfect in life. And quite frankly, we fall way short of that is the reality. There are mistakes we make probably on the daily, aren't they? As far as like, you know, day to day, you can sit there and go, wow, I just did not get done everything on my to-do list. If anybody's got a to-do list, you're familiar with the fact that you either have a very small one and set the bar really low, which most people with to-do lists don't do that, or you're going to be failing, you know, on some things. So that's why it's really important. I'm going to kind of talk about today some of the problems with perfectionism and some solutions in perfectionism. The other option I was thinking on this whole perfection, you could, on certain things in life, be perfect if the bar is really low, right? You could be the master at go fish, but is that really... <laughs> you could be the king or queen of the game go fish, and that's kind of not, you know, really, is that what we want to shoot for? You know, I was just thinking, like, you have to live really small if you want to have success at being a perfectionist. So, some of the other problems, well, besides unrealistic, the shaming, which we had talked about, and shaming sucks your energy. If you're expecting yourself to be perfect, and you're falling short, and then your self-talk, which is what we're going to talk about next week, actually, is letting go of harsh self-talk. Yeah, oh, that, that, there's a lot of that going on. There's noises that were being made as we talked about that. We're going to talk about it a little bit. Next week we're going to do the whole, uh, the whole sermon will be on how we can let go of the harsh self-talk stuff. So, and, but when we do that, when you're shaming, it's an energy suck. It keeps you from doing other things. Another problem with perfectionism is it doesn't allow you to get help. It keeps you a closed system. Because if there are things that aren't working, you don't want to say they're not working. You're expecting that you should have it all figured out. So you don't let in. It's a closed system. And you don't let in help. You know? Another thing that's uh, some of the reasons why we really want to uh, interrupt perfectionism also, people avoid God. Have you noticed that? People, a lot of times, it just breaks my heart that people relate to church like, I'll go to church when I get it all together, instead of, I'm going to come to church a hot mess, because that's where I need to be when I'm a hot mess. You know? Amen. Yeah. Amen for that. You know, so that's just sad. It's, it's broken hearted. It's like wanting to earn God, wanting to earn his love. Another thing as far as perfectionism is not being able to let go of things. We're going to have a, one of the um, segments that we're going to do on letting go is letting go of good for best. If you're expecting to be perfect and to get it all, you won't let go of good things. Believe it or not, you can't do best things unless you're willing to let go of some good things. Usually our choices aren't good or bad, right? Usually our choices, as far as where we put our time, energy, talents, resources, are between what's good and what's the best, as far as where we can be investing our time and talents and energy. So we're going to do a segment on that. It also doesn't allow you to stretch, or to try, or to learn, or to grow. And we're going to look at some of those things. So we're also going to look at four solutions to perfectionism. Number one, turn to Philippians chapter 3. <clears throat> 
And in our number one key to getting rid of perfectionism or letting go of perfectionism is normalizing stretching instead of perfection. That our goal, and that's what this verse that we're going to read is talking about, to have a different expectation of yourself. It says in Philippians 3 and verse 12, it says, not that I have already attained or am already perfected, but I press on that I may lay hold of that for which Christ Jesus has also laid hold of me. Brethren, I do not count myself to have apprehended, but one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forward to those things which are ahead. So I want to kind of talk about this because that already attained or have already have apprehended is kind of an I've arrived mentality. A lot of times people think that that's the goal. Like I've arrived, like where you're done. I'm done with whatever it is. I'm done growing. I'm done, you know, I, I, my um, full-time job for money, <laughs> this is full-time too, but not for money, but, um, but my full-time <laughs> paid job is, is an acting teacher. I have an acting school. And I really see this, the perfectionism gets in the way of people doing well at it. And so one of the things that people relate to when they're learning, and this is not just for acting, but for many things where people think that they want to get to, I've arrived, where now I'm good and I'm set. You know, I'm at, at the top of the mountain and there's no more, nowhere else to go. Or I can just sit and relax that now I'm awesome. I'm an awesome actor and you can't work on it anymore. You know what? Acting is anything difficult like acting or any other thing that you are pursuing is if you're not continually stretching, and that's the other part of this verse, if you're not constantly stretching, you're going to atrophy. It's kind of weird. There's not any just kind of staying neutral. Neutral is not neutral. Neutral is atrophy. You know? Closed system. Closed system goes from greater to lesser disorder or whatever. Did I say it the right way? The other way, sorry. <laughs> I was like, I was like, hmm. Anyway, closed system. You go from orderly to less order is what it is. And so not stretching makes things atrophy in whatever it is. Anything difficult, you know, clearly there are some things like go fish that you could probably master. <laughs> or, I don't know, just any little thing. Like, I swept this floor perfectly. Maybe, I don't know. You know, maybe there's like, but, but you're living small. So instead of doing that, to have our thinking change where it's normal, instead of perfection, to be stretching, which is kind of the opposite. Because stretching means failing all the time. Stretching means being uncomfortable. If you want to grow, if you want to reach your capacity, we want to be people that are constantly reaching forward and stretching and doing things that we're not good at, that we're not comfortable with, and that will include messiness and floundering around. So perfection is not going to look like that. It's the opposite. We want to normalize floundering around to reach to keep reaching forward and to keep growing our capacity. It's kind of exciting. You know, and I wasn't, I thought I was doing that for many years because I'm kind of like a hardworking person. You know, I'm one of those, I, I don't know, A-type a people I like. I, I, I'm always like taking on a lot. And I kind of thought that I was stretching in some ways because hard work I thought was the same and it's not. It was, I was challenged uh, a few years ago by uh, one of my, most influential mentors, Dr. John Townsend, he wrote the Boundaries books. He's partners with Dr. Henry Cloud, who wrote the psych psychotic thing about perfectionism. And Dr. Townsend said to me, you're an underachiever, which, you know, people have not said that to me a whole lot. You know, I have a fairly successful business, so people don't tell me I'm an underachiever. So I was just like, I was, I was excited. I was provoked and a really kind of like, wow. What is this? I'm 55 years old then. I was like maybe 50. I'm like, I'm an underachiever? Hmm, I want to hear more about this. And what it was is I had so much fear, and this was the perfectionism part of setting goals. I wouldn't set goals because I was like, it sounded stupid to me. You set a goal, and how do you know you're going to get there, right? So I was sitting there going, well, I'll just feel stupid, so I just won't set any goals. I won't stretch. I won't reach. I'll just do what I can do and figure that that's good, you know, that's good. If I set the goal and I fall short, I'm just going to feel really stupid. 
Perfectionism, right? So it wasn't stretching. So now what's exciting to me and what the goal for this number one thing is to make being uncomfortable comfortable. To stretch. Number one is to stretch instead of perfection, to be living in a constant state of looking that that's where we want to be as people, whether it's growing personally, growing spiritually, whether it's in what we're called to do with our gifts and our talents, etc., to get comfortable being constantly uncomfortable, and that includes failure. That includes messy. That includes floundering. That's where growth is, not in perfection. How cool is that, huh? We want to be thinking, that's what this verse is talking about. And part of this we're going to talk about, it's kind of, it says, not that I've already attained, I haven't arrived, or I'm already perfected. That's not going to happen either. It's never going to happen. It says, but I press on, I reach, I reach, I stretch. It says, and then reaching forward is the two things. So two times, or actually three times it says, don't go for perfect, don't go for already arrived, go for stretching, reaching. It says, I count not myself to have apprehended, but one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind, which is another one we're going to talk about in letting go on one of the weeks, is letting go of our past, the things that are behind us, and how do we do that? It's not just get over it, people. A lot of times people think letting go of the past means just get over it. That's not the answer. You can't let go of your past that way. We're going to talk about that in this Letting Go series as well. Because I know a lot of people, that's a part of what's weighing them down, is having the past be, be having a way, weigh them back. It says, forgetting those things which are behind it, reaching forward is the stretching, is the stretching. So you're not testing your limits if you're not stretching. If you're not failing, you're not stretching. You know? We have this saying in my acting class that I like. It's called embrace the sucking. That's one of our slogans. We have a couple of slogans. One is you are enough, meaning who you are intrinsically is enough. You, God made you as the gift that you are, that your, that your gifts and how God designed you, you don't need to be somebody else. You can be awesome just being who you are. That's one of them. And then our other one is embrace the sucking, which means... Like you think about it, embrace. I think of it as a hug, right? Embrace somebody. So sucking is like failure, you know? The, uh, we had an actor years ago that came to me and said, I'm so sick of sucking. When's it going to end? She's like, I'm tired of sucking. When do I just get it over with? And I was like, you're never going to stop sucking. <laughs> so you're not, don't be thinking about it like I can skip over the sucking. A lot of people try to do that in my class. I see this all the time. It's painful. People have a desire and a dream to be actors, and yet they don't want to show up or do a scene because they're not good. It's painful and agonizing to get up there and look like a fool and do a terrible scene, but guess what? That's the only way you're going to learn. You have to suck to get awesome. You know, and so you want to keep getting awesomer and awesomer? Embrace the sucking. Give it a hug. Because it means, so that the goal is not not to fail. I always tell my actors, the goal is not to do an awesome scene. The goal is, what did I learn today that can help me move forward? That's the pressing forward. To look at things, that what, what did I discover in the sucking? What did I discover in the failure? That's the prize. That's the goal. That's what we're reaching for. The pressing forward is constantly reaching forward to say, what do I understand a little bit more that I can help me to move forward from this failure. The world's, you hear stories all the time, you know, Thomas Edison, you hear all these things about people that have, that have done phenomenal things in life, that the failures were huge, you know. So to look at it when you fail as, be gentle with yourself, we're going to talk about the, the self-talk part. Be gentle with yourself and look at what can I learn? How can I grow? It's a gift right now that I failed. What can I discover from it? You know, it's funny because I've, had to, I've definitely had to learn that doing this. You know, being a pastor, we started doing Sunday services about a year ago. And so it mortifies me when I don't do as well as I, when I make stupid mistakes or say stupid things up here. It's, you know... But it, you know what? It's not helpful for me to beat up on myself when I do that. When I'm rambly or, you know, bore people or things like that. You know, but I want to, I just have to talk gently to myself. Just go, what can I learn so that I can get better at this, so that I can keep growing? 
you know, and trying to be all that God's called me to be. But if I don't put myself in this position of stretching or growing, do you know what I'm saying? Just reaching forward, reaching forward. Okay, so number two. So number one is normalize stretching, but never perfect. Living, that's what we're shooting for. Stretch, stretch, not perfect. Perfect instead, I mean, stretching instead of perfect. Let's go to um, number two. Number two to get rid of perfectionism is to act like an ant. So, you don't get it yet? Okay, now I'll explain, sorry. <laughs> act like an ant is number two. There's two parts to act like an ant. Um, you know, it's funny because there's this, um, uh, actually, let's go to the verse of scripture here. In Proverbs chapter six, it says, go to the ant, you sluggard. <laughs> Consider her ways and be wise. And so we're, the verse is saying, think about and ponder what we can learn from an ant. So um, it was really interesting. Henry Cloud talked about in his, um, I forget which book, it might be How People Grow. Uh, he was talking about when he had to do his doctoral theses, he was given this time and he's like, he kept postponing, postponing, postponing because he didn't know where to start or what to do. He just didn't know where to begin with it. So he kept put, procrastinating doing something. And so then he got the scripture and he's like, he started pondering on what does this mean to learn from an ant? To think about what, are the, what is an ant doing? And part of the wonderment, if you've ever seen ants, or so he bought himself a little ant colony and watched, you know, the, the, this massive amount of sand that had no shape or form and saw these ants go to town and in such a short period of time it was incredible just taking one little piece of sand those ants built this really elaborate tunnels and everything else that were mind-boggling they just it's incre incredible and that is one of the things that boggles our minds about ants right have you ever watched ants it's just like how is that little teeny teeny thing part of it's like this little thing and it's just a piece of sand so there's two parts of why ants are able to accomplish so much for being so small. Ants do phenomenal things and they're teeny. And it's beautiful what they can do. There's two parts to that. One is do something. You know, you look at all the sand. A perfectionist looks at all that mound of sand and says, oh, I don't, I, there's no way. And just won't even start or even try looking at all that sand. The ant just does something. One little grain, one little grain of sand doesn't look like it's going to do jack diddly usually, right? You know, just like, and it takes a lot of effort, Karen. That you see that ant and the piece of sand, and it just looks like one piece seems like it's huge. But then, so we've got do something to move towards it, and we'll talk about that a little bit. And then the second thing is, don't do it alone. Again, the closed system, guys. The ants get it done because. They get help, they're not, that one little ant couldn't do that. But when they're together and get help, so we don't wanna be a closed system or relate where we're trying to do life alone. Perfectionists do life alone because they're too ashamed about the parts that you don't know or the parts that you don't understand to get help. And I used to be that way. I lived that way and I was so limiting what I'm able to do for years of my life because I was ashamed to say what I don't know or what I don't understand, I couldn't say. I don't understand that. I expected a lot of myself. Um, I remember, you know, it was just, it, it, and it kept me stuck for years. I just started learning this stuff like 10 years ago, you know, which is, you know, 55. Now I'm like, it's kind of late to just begin learning some of these things. And some of them, honestly, I just learned five years ago. Or, and it's constant, actually. I don't know. It just keeps, I probably two years from now look back and go, wow, was, was I stupid two years ago? But. <laughs> I'm stretching. I want to just be in that place that I'm always learning things that I'm thinking two years ago I was stupid, kind of. You know? But I'm always discovering kind of thing. There was a, in school, um, I went to, I never went to school very much. Uh, my mom didn't make me, so I went like 50 days a year. And, uh, but somehow, I had an AP physics class in ninth grade, and I showed up uh, it was like a month after school had started for the first time and the, the teacher was speaking and I didn't understand what the teacher was saying and I had so much shame about that. I actually sat there. Now it looks so crazy to me looking back, but I carried the shame of that for so long that I thought it was stupid that I showed up a month after class began and didn't understand and there was no way and I didn't want to go back so I barely went back. 
You know, it made me not want to go back to school, just like my actors, when they have a, not a good scene, they just don't want to even try anymore, because there's so much shame in not having it perfect or have it figured out. But that kind of thinking of, being, of me expecting that I would have all the answers or to say I don't understand, just because I don't understand something does not mean I'm stupid. I can learn. So it's one of the things that you want to say, just because, you know, one of the self-talk things that you want to say to yourself is, I can learn. So what? I don't know. I'm just started. Why would I know all that? That's normal, just to normalize that. Normalize the learning process, learn, normalize the growing process. So you can do something, though. Let's say you don't have all the answers. You don't know what the direction is. Jim Rowan used to say, you know, just, just pick a direction and go like mad. If, it's, if you're wrong, you'll find out faster. <laughs> do you know? Instead of just being paralyzed and not moving, do something towards it. Maybe if you don't know what the answer, perfectionism too wants to see everything ahead before you go. I'm not saying take crazy risks, but in stretching you should be taking some risks, risking failure. Make some smart risks though, you know? And do something. Maybe you don't know what's ahead, maybe it's just researching something. Maybe it's just getting more information, asking questions. Maybe that's the do something that the ant is doing. You know, it's funny too, doing the church and the business, you know, I'm lost a lot on both of those things. There's some, constantly, there's constantly things that I'm like, oh, I don't know what we're supposed to do next or how to do that. But you can do something. You can ask questions. You can ask people that have more experience, which is something you really want. No matter what it is, whether it's spiritual growth, career growth, anything, ask people that know more. Ask to be taught. We have a mentoring thing at church because part of what we're committed to spiritually is helping people to grow up in their walk with God. You know, where we're passing it on to other people that want to grow in their walk. Okay. So... Here's the thing, too, is, you know, people a lot of times go, what if I'm not good at something? You won't know until you try for a while. If you are interested in something or curious or what have you, try it for a long time. If you just try it a time or two, you'd still have no clue. You know, you think of a direction for your life. Try it over a period of time. You'll find out. And then fail a lot. You know, embrace the sucking in it. Verse uh, number three. Number three in getting rid of perfectionism, the answer is grace. Grace is a huge... You know, if you are focused on being a perfectionist, you're not allowing yourself to receive grace. Grace is one of the most powerful things that God has given us that we need desperately is grace. Grace means, the technical definition, is unmerited, unearned, God's favor. It means that when we don't deserve it, God is for us. In our darkest and most shameful times, God still loves us and is for us and in his corner. That's grace. It's undeserved. It's God is for you no matter what. If you are worried about being a perfectionist, do you not let allowing grace in? And we need it. The whole world works on a work system. A work system is that you earn everything, you know, like it, you're deserving of things. The whole world thinks that way. A lot of times our value and our worth is attached to that, like being worth something because of how hard we work. Works is the opposite of grace. It says if you have to work for something, if you have to earn it, it's not grace. It's a payment. It's a wage. You know, with God, we need grace. Every, every one of us, because we all fall short, the Bible says all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. We have to have grace. You know, the world system and why people go crazy as far as like evaluating their worth is, you know, look at it. Like everybody, spoke, you're supposed to be gorgeous. You're supposed to be rich. You're supposed to be whatever, you know, to be. And, and then when, what do you do? If, if that's where you're finding your value and your worth in that, Somebody's always better, aren't they? Because that just leads to comparing. If that's how we measure, how we look at our worth as people, we will always fall short and that will feel crappy because you look at the next person if it's by looks. And honestly, with our culture and TV, and I'm in entertainment, so, so I see all this. It's just like the ridiculous 
women and you know and and men both in the looks you got men getting facelifts I mean it doesn't look so good on women either but it's just sort of like it's just the insanity as far as the pressure that people look of thinking that they have to look perfect and the pressure of that it puts you in a constant state of shame and falling short. And you know what people do? Is they cover it up by putting a mask on, by trying to act like everything's fine. When it's not fine, people are hurting and they're playing it off. That's what I did for so many years. We need grace. Grace is the solution. Let's actually look uh, at this verse of scripture. In 2 Corinthians 12 and verse 9, it says, one of the things I love about our church culture that everybody says is different and is a part of our vision statement is it's a place you can be safe with your crap all splayed out there and nobody's going to shame you. That's why I talk about things, about the fact that during my first marriage, I committed adultery through the whole thing. I want to talk about stuff like that. So this is safe because you can't get healing. You can't get deliverance without being able to be open and honest and get healing. So when you allow it, when you allow yourself to be needy, Christ can be there with grace. His grace is enough. Grace means you don't deserve it. So part of it's like when you can talk about the places that we fall short, well, we can receive that God loves you just the way you are in the darkest and most shameful places. Whatever parts that you feel like that, that you fall short, that his grace can be there and that that's where there's healing. Because then you're not relying on your own strength or your own ability, but in his power. If you're a closed system, perfectionist, where you've got to have it, you don't open yourself up to Christ's strength. To say, I can't go it alone. I tell you, I'm proud that I'm needy and weak because the more that I've gotten to be okay with that, the more I've allowed his power and strength in my life. I am stronger now being able to talk about this stuff than back 10 years ago when I was wearing a mask trying to act like everything was fine when it's not fine. Well, it was more than 10 years ago. But, you know, that's where healing is. We want to have a place where, where grace lives. We need grace. Perfectionism shuts us off from that. From recognizing places that we have healing and then we won't get healed. All we're doing is faking it. Because there's no perfection, so you're just lying to yourself and other people. How is that helpful? There's no healing in that. That's where I used to be. You know? I'm remarried, happily married for 14 years now and it's God's grace that, that healed me. Yeah. gotten the healing in my in the area of relationships that I was just so desperate and screwed up and hurting people I couldn't have gotten the healing without the grace I knew God loved me right in the middle of that when I was acting like an absolute jerk <laughs> I could say other words but you know what I mean butthole <laughs> I don't have to edit that out right okay butthole <laughs> I was acting like that. <laughs> so it's allowing ourselves to be real about the weakness where we can allow Christ to heal us. We can allow his strength to heal us. We make, you know, room. Embrace the sucking. That's what's funny about it. This is embrace the sucking right there. I'd rather boast in my infirmities. I like to brag about that I suck. <laughs> How counterintuitive, you know? Take pleasure in infirmities, in needs. Take pleasure in it. When you see it, what's kind of cool is as soon as you see a needy part, that's when, aha, I can let Christ be there for me in it. As opposed to shutting my eyes to that. Okay, one more. Oh, actually, you know, I just want to also, just before we move on to the fourth uh, solution to perfectionism, grace is big, though, for this. We need grace from God and from other people. That's a reason, again, closed system, we need fellowship. You know, because it is in a fellowship, and that's why it's important for a church to be a safe place where you don't have to hide things or play it off to be some goody-goody little Christian person. You could just be a hot mess. Church is a great place to be a hot mess. This friend of mine said that when he was uh, uh, going to college that he 
he had not done some work and he hadn't written his final paper. And so he had all this fear, you know, because he's like, oh my gosh, I'm going to fail this class. I've never failed before. Uh, because the final paper was a big part of his final grade. And so the teacher, he went and said, can I get a drop from this class? And the teacher's like, no, I can't give them out anymore. It's, um, so he says, oh my gosh, I'm going to fail. So the teacher said, I'm going to give you an A. Now go write an A paper. That's what grace is. It's that God's given you the A already. It says the grace, the grace that God loves us right now the way that we are inspires us to want to grow and heal. Understanding that as opposed to trying to earn God's love and favor. Okay, number four. Change your self-talk. And I just want to kind of run through a, front, a few of these because next week we're going to be doing the whole thing on letting go of harsh self-talk. Harsh self-talk is shaming, shaming talk, just beating up on yourself. A lot of people think that it's inspiring. It's not. It sucks you dry. You can do less when you're shaming yourself. And so it's really a big deal to learn. And I'm not saying just positive because I think that's kind of stupid too. You see these people on American Idol, right? They can't sing and they think they can sing. Why is that helpful? You know? You see, it's, it's, it's painful to watch, right? It's painful. This is not being in touch with reality. So there's another solution. I'm not going to, you know, I'm not going to tell you the whole thing. But next week where it's learning how to have better self-talk and how to, how to have it be reality-based, but things that are life-giving. They can, even how you speak to yourself when it comes to failure, but I'm going to give you a few things you can just be working on right now, just a few of the self-talk things that can help in this perfectionism. I gave you a couple already, but it's normal to fail when I'm learning something. It's normal. Of course I'm not great at this. That's, you know, I tell myself that. Of course I'm not great at this. I'm just learning. I'm not supposed to be great at this. But I can learn, you know. Learning anything takes time. To have that understanding. I can get help. That can be in your self-talk. So when I'm not great at this, I can get help. I can learn. Might take me longer than others, but I can still learn. There's, you know, a lot of that going on. So what? It takes me longer. I'm a late bloomer at 55. I'm a little bit of a late bloomer. So what? <laughs> Better bloom than not to bloom at all, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know, perfectionist, you go, oh, I feel stupid. I'm 55 just learning this stuff. I'll just stay in my room, you know? <laughs> It's, uh, I can learn, I can learn. Uh, I can get help. God loves me and wants to help me. God loves me just the way I am. I don't have to earn it. God is big and wants to help me. I'm doing my best. I'm willing to do my part. You know, these are just some things that can help you. It's grace. God loves me just the way I am. I can start over if you've screwed up really royally. So what? I can start today. You can start today to move, to do something, to move in a different direction. You can choose that today. God can help. And I can get help from the body of Christ. God designed it that as a community in the body of Christ that we can get help with each other. So let me just recap the four things. One, to overcoming perfectionism is stretch instead of perfection. Normalize stretching, that that's what it looks like, and that that's going to look floundery. But number two, act like an ant is the second one. And there's two parts to act like an ant. One is do something, and the second thing is get help. Don't do it alone. Number three, antidote to perfectionism is grace. And number four is watch your self-talk, which is what we're going to be working on uh, for the next week. Perfectionism is psychotic. <laughs> Stretch, take risks, get uncomfortable. Get comfortable being uncomfortable, being in a constant state of uncomfortable. Embrace the sucking. You know, works for acting, works for all kinds of things. Embrace the sucking. Give it a big hug. And don't be a closed system. Get help from God and others. And change the way that you talk to yourself about it. Get rid of shaming. Okay? So let me pray. I'm excited and blessed to have you guys here. Uh, you know, it, letting go is easier said than done, isn't it? Yeah. It's not like you can't just come to one sermon and it's all good, right? <laughs> uh, again, that's the perfectionistic way of thinking. I heard this. If you heard it once and you're sitting there going, oh, why have not let go yet? <laughs> 
I, I heard the teaching Sunday. Why am I still doing this? Guess what? That doesn't work. <laughs> And part of it is, is it is a process. It's one of the reasons that we've got an eight-week series on this because it's probably going to take a whole bunch of hearing some of these things in different ways to begin the journey of letting go. You need people. You need others. It's not going it alone. It's not going to work for letting go of stuff that are hard, hard things, things you've been holding on to, habits you've been holding on to, destructive thinking. Anyway, so hopefully you'll join us next week for the self-talk. Okay, let me pray. Heavenly Father, I feel so grateful for your grace. I love your grace. You have shown me grace, and it has healed and changed my life. I could not. One of my favorite things about my life right now is my wonderful husband and being in love after 14 years. And I know that that was inconceivable 20 years ago. I was so in a dark place when it came to relationships. And and was so not deserving of your love. I uh, made a mockery out of you and who you are, God, but it didn't matter because you didn't run away from you and me. You hung in there with me and cared and fought for me to get healing and to change things that I needed to let go, God. And so I'm thankful for that. And I ask for you to help everyone here, whatever it is that's on their heart, whatever harsh self-talk, whatever it is, shaming things, etc., that you just help everyone here to heal in this process of letting go, letting, letting go of things that are holding them back from being all that you've called them to be, God. And that we can be messy, we can fail, and your love is enough. Thank you, God. Amen.